for the moms who raised us up, gave us hope, and made us strong. For the young moms who became moms sooner than expected and gave it all they had. For the single moms who had to figure out how to do this on their own. For those who never got called mom, but who cared for us all like a mom would. For the hurting moms who've loved and lost but never given up. For the praying moms who don't always know what to do, but always know who to talk to. For the working moms, the stay home moms, the cooking moms, and the takeout moms. For taking care of us when you barely had enough time to take care of yourself. For teaching us how to walk and how to make a difference. For the late night snuggles and the early morning pancakes. For sitting with us after our first breakup. For lifting us up when others put us down. For the rides, the meals, the laundry, and the birthday parties. For the years, tears, laughter, and love. It's not enough, but we want to say thank you. Thank you for doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. We love you. We honor you. We remember you. We thank you. This next song was requested by a mother at Cedar Lane. We know that she loves it, and we hope that you do too. Are ye able, said the Master, to be crucified with me? Yea, the sturdy dreamers answered to the death we This morning, I know you have prayer concerns, and I want to give you a chance to speak those out during the prayer as I continue with our morning prayer. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you so much that as we bow together, even as we are apart from one another, you hear our prayers. We thank you that you have watched over us for another week and that you have prepared the way for us. We thank you for those who are doing things that are uncomfortable for them right now to, to take care of us. We thank you for the doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists and all the hospital staffs that are there. We thank you for the firefighters and the police officers and the ambulance drivers and all those who serve in ways like that. We thank you for the folks on garbage trucks and all the things that are just kind of almost unmentioned but are still a part of all of this. And we thank you right now that you are with us, that you are giving us peace and strength for the journey ahead, 
We thank you that as we pray this prayer, we are your children. And you hear our hearts as we speak out before you the concerns we have right now. We are so glad that you are in the midst of us and in the midst of all that we pray for. We pray for our country and its leadership. We pray for researchers who are trying to find vaccines. We pray for those who are trying to find ways to keep us safe. And we pray right now that you would help us to be your church as we live out our lives out in the world. Help us to be gentle and kind, merciful and full of grace. As hard as it is to even fathom that we could be that. This is our prayer in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, Cedar Lane. Happy Mother's Day. This morning I wanted to share a story and a song with you that hopefully will bless the mothers of our congregation and of the world. Uh, I'm sharing this story out of a book that was given to me by one of our church moms, a, a lady who has been a mother to many of you, in fact, Lorraine Abbott. Um, this book is the ambassador book of great hymn stories, and if you ever get the opportunity to read it, there are some amazing stories to tell the backing of all the hymns that we know and love to sing. But for today, I wanted to read a story out of this book that was relevant to moms. I think you would be surprised to find out that in our hymnal, as well as most other hymnals, there are not many Mother's Day related songs. So for that, we often default to songs about comfort, about caring, about healing, because those are things that we attach to moms. Uh, but I wanted to go a little bit of a different route. I wanted to play a song that honored a woman who influenced me personally, uh, my grandmother. Her favorite song in the entire world was What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So I go over to this book that Lorraine had gifted me, and I flip to the page with that hymn on it, and I read the story and instantly become overwhelmed that this is the song I'm supposed to play this morning. So I'm going to share that story with you. The writer's name was Joseph Scriven, and his life was riddled with bad experiences, loss, and grief. Um, he was born in Northern Ireland, and by the time he was 23 years old, he had been engaged twice and lost both fiancés within a week of each wedding. He had moved to Canada to become a school teacher, and while there, but fell ill and had to be quarantined for two years. Sounds a little familiar. After that, he delved into a deep depression, having lost so many people around him, feeling as if he could not be happy, and so he, he put that effort, that energy, back out into his community. The people of the greater Ontario area knew him as the Good Samaritan. They saw him as the man that helped everyone no matter what. Well, one day Joseph Scriven found out that his mother, who still lived in Northern Ireland, had fallen ill and did not have long to live. Like many of us on this Mother's Day, due to distance and physical illness, he could not be with her. He could not comfort her. So he wrote these words. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. I would like you today to think about those words and think about as maybe we are away from our mothers or our grandmothers or our aunts, the ladies in our lives that, that matter to us, that cared for us, that were our moms the ladies that we celebrate today, as we cannot necessarily be with them, we are with them, and more importantly, God is with them and with us. 
So no matter what, no matter the grief, no matter the distance, no matter the quarantine or how frustrating this can be, just know all you have to do is take it to the Lord in prayer. Happy Mother's Day. What friend we have in All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Oh, needless pain we bear Oh, because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer Have we trials and temptations is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? This morning I'd like to read from Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 29th verse. And I'm going to read that out of a book, a Bible that my mother uh, gave me back when I was in high school. And it's the Good News for Modern Man version. Do not use harmful words in talking. Use only helpful words so that what you say will do good to those who hear you. And do not make God's Holy Spirit sad for the Spirit is God's mark of ownership on you, a guarantee that the day will come when God will set you free. Get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tenderhearted to one another and forgive one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. I thought I would start with that because I... I I've gone several different ways with what I wanted to say today, and I realized that Mother's Day is a tough day uh, for so many, and uh, you know I'm, I'm part of that group, uh, having lost my mom and my sister, um, and I think about both of them and, and how they were mothers and how, my, I mean, I say that about my sister, but my sister was so strong a woman that, uh, you know, she, she could be really tough when she wanted to be, but she could also be very tender and... Uh, very caring for me, and uh, there was something really cool about that. But I started to think about how many people uh, pour, poured into my life and helped me, and how many people pour into your life and help you. And I think that uh, Oprah Winfrey said that, that, uh, that actually our biology is the least important thing about motherhood. And I think that's true. And so what I started to do, uh, I... Uh, I wanted to show you my office first. If you've ever been to my office, you realize that it is a collection of pictures and things that have come from different parts of my life, gifts and other things that remind me of good times, that remind me of people that are just full of knickknacks and trinkets and wonderful little gifts. 
that just opened my heart. Well, you see my office, and uh, when you see my office, you see that I have a, a knick-knacky sort of life. I have uh, all sorts of little things everywhere, and those knick-knacks are, are gifts from people. As I looked around, I saw gifts from people from all the churches that I've ever served, and I realized that there are people that from the very beginning have been putting and pouring into me good things. And as I, one of the things that I realized is I, when I first was called into ministry, I uh, started to buy the Barclay um, commentaries, and I would write in them uh, who gave me either the money or gave me the commentary. And the very first one that I opened up was for my grandma Bondé on my 18th birthday. And, and I started to go through them, and it was so, so cool because here's one from Aunt Chassie Dillard, who was uh, just a cool lady in my life, uh, who poured into me through all the years. Uh, and this is, one that, uh, this is one that made me laugh because what it says is replacement for book bought in 1980 when Daisy, our dog, ate the first volume. And it just made me happy to, to see that. Uh, here's one from uh, Mom and Dad Walker, Donna's parents, who, who gave me this as I started to get into the Old Testament versions of this. Uh, just a really a cool thing. And, and what was funny is when I opened the Bible up that I read from today, I found a letter uh, from a lady that had been on my heart as I started to prepare this and realizing the people that have poured into my life. And this is a very special person who uh, has been a part of my life uh, since I was a, a teenager. I, I was uh, I babysat for her daughter, and her daughter was the only person in the world I would babysit for. And uh, I would go to their house, and the only music they had that was even close to something that I would listen to was they had Barry Manilow Live, and I would listen to Barry Manilow Live while I was over there. Don't tell anybody. But uh, she wrote me this note in 1990, right after my ordination, and she wrote, Richard, you have always had a special place in my heart. Uh, this is... Uh, such a good thing to see what the Lord is doing in my life and watching it unfold as his plans unfold for you. He has truly blessed you with Donna, and I'm so glad that you have each other, and it goes on. But Patty Hunt has been a person in my life that has not been my mom, but has really poured in her, her soul to me and been nice to me in times maybe I didn't even deserve that. Um, I have all sorts of other things that, uh, that uh, rem remind me of uh, how people have poured into me. When I was going through a really rough time in one of my churches, uh, two ladies came to my office and they said, before you preach again, I want you to watch. We want you to watch this. And this is their copy of Pollyanna. And they had me watch it. And I'm telling you, you know, you hear people say, oh, uh, they're just being Pollyanna-ish or whatever. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's not so bad. And it softened my soul and it, and it healed wounds when I watched this. And so every now and then I still watch this because you know what? Nobody owns the church. And uh, they, they taught me that that day. And so I start thinking about all the people that have poured into me. And I hope that as I'm saying this, you're not just hearing me like brag on the people that have poured into my life and that have said kind things and that have not said uh, mean things, but have, have worked in my life. Uh, but I hope that you're hearing and thinking about the people in your life. Uh, because a piece of, of where we've been and who we've been with is in our lives. One of the things I love to have with me is I have this piece of a church that I served. This is uh, over 150 years old. And it's, the, uh, it's where the, the joinery was, where they hammer in the, the peg into the, into the building. But I, this sits in my office. I see it all the time, and it, it reminds me that I, that uh, while this is a piece of that physical building, that we're all a piece of the church, and there are things that we say to people that that seal us and put us into the into the actual body of Christ, that bring us in and that keep us there, and that when we think we can't go any further, they'll they'll, they'll say you can. And I think about people that have been in offices right next to mine. I think about people who have have been nowhere near me, but that have spoken words. I couldn't find the, the scrapbooks, but there was a man named Curtis Eldred, and he was a, he was a humdinger of a person. He, uh, he was opinionated and all those things, but he used to send me, he would collect scraps of, from different magazines, and he would make them into scrapbooks, and he would send them to me and tell me stories about life and, and to just build me up in my faith. And he's one of the people that uh, actually sent me a letter when I was so desperate and, and depressed, and I thought that uh, what I really wanted to come was in the mailbox. And when I opened my mailbox up, it was, uh, it was a letter from Curtis Eldred 
basically telling me that when, when you can't pray the clouds away, praise them away. And, you know, just little things like that, little moments like that in my life have helped me through some tough times. And God put those people in my life, just as God has put people into your lives. And you know what? Here's the hard part. Here's the part that we, we end with. Here's the part that we have to, to take is that God put you in people's lives for that too. We're not just to be recipients of those kind words. We're not just to be recipients of people's patience. We're not to be recipients of people being, being good and merciful. We're to live that out too. So there are people that God puts into our lives that we do the same for. So be careful of your words. As I, as I say that today, I, I haven't talked much about my mom, but I just want to say that, oh my gosh, my mama, she, she was so proud of me and and uh, it made me so happy to know that. But she did so much. And, and she drove me insane sometimes. She would, she would and I, I talked about it a little bit, but she would, every time if I said, hey, I'm about to buy some tires. And she'd say, have you prayed about it? And I would get off the phone. And Donna, having lost both of her parents in the early 2000s, I would start to grumble and she would say, one day, one day, you'll be thankful for those conversations. And guess what? I am. And so today, don't, don't overlook any conversations that you have with those people precious in your life. Don't overlook any chance you have to be kind, to be gentle, to be humble, and to be loving. Let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you so much for each person who prays with me. I pray that you would help them to not only appreciate those that have come in their lives and help them to, to be who they are, but I pray that you would help them to be that kind of person too. This I pray, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.